Hello, Brian Lynch here. It is uh, September 24th, 2011. I'm uh, out at the orchard, and uh, my quest to plant uh, an orchard on a hill is continuing. Uh, you can see I've uh, put up uh, numerous retaining walls. I want to say that I think my masonry skills are improving. Uh, I might actually be a, uh, a half-decent bricklayer by the time I get all the way across the hill that's uh, about 700 feet long and about 70 feet high. But uh, what I'd really like to talk about is hunters. Now, uh, because of this location and because it's wooded and because there are uh, cornfields nearby, I knew when I bought this piece of property that deer were going to be a problem. Now, the best way to deal with deer is, of course, to put up a really big fence. Six feet tall, higher, electrify it, barbed wires, moat, alligators, whatnot. Anyways, maybe not alligators. But uh, a really big fence is a very effective way of uh, putting up, getting rid of, or preventing deer from uh, eating the fruit of trees, from the trees, uh, eating the leaves, and scraping on them with their antlers. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to do that. Uh, it just seemed, it seems like a lot of work. And, uh, you know, a fence, even though it's very effective, it's not all that nice looking. So I thought uh, a close second to that would be to have uh, hunters out protecting the trees uh, for as long as possible uh, to prevent the deer from scraping on them and eating the fruit and whatnot. And uh, at least here in Indiana, the hunters, uh, the best hunters, uh, to find are bow hunters, uh, simply because the season is so long. Uh, bow hunting season, uh, at least where I am in Indiana, it starts on September 15th and it goes three and a half months to January 1st. So three and a half months of somebody watching over my trees, I thought that was going to be a great thing and uh, I knew from some of my friends who also have land that uh, people Hunters are really desperate for land because uh, most of the public land uh, is not very good because it's crowded and kind of sketchy, and uh, the private uh, private landowners are uh, usually somewhat reluctant to let hunters onto their land because of their possible liability and whatnot. So uh, I knew that there were hunters desperate for land, and I knew that I had land that was going to have deer on it, so it would be uh, enticing for them. And so I thought, hey, it's going to be no problem to get a bunch of deer, a bunch of hunters on uh, the land. And it turns out I was correct, but I went about it in completely the wrong way. Now, uh, in order to maximize the time that's, that there's at least one hunter on my land, I thought that uh, the way to go about this would be to have guys or ladies uh, schedule time. Uh, online, just have a, a program that would automatically, uh, you know, let a guy sign up for say Tuesday mornings uh, or Tuesday all day Tuesday, and everybody else would be able to see that oh, Tuesday is already taken, but Wednesday is available, and so by that way uh, there would be a lot of hunters signing up for time, and invariably like all the time would be taken, and there would be somebody out here protecting my trees for just an obscene amount of time, and not, there would be no damage whatsoever. That was my theory. Uh, that was my idea. In theory, it's a great idea. Uh, in practice, it's terrible. Uh, but it turns out that hunters, bow hunters, and firearm hunters, really do not like to hunt on land uh, where somebody else is hunting or where somebody else who they do not know is also hunting. Even if they're there at this, not there at the same time, uh, it turns out some of them, they like to leave their... Uh, bow hunters really like to be uh, up high, uh, so as they uh, take their stands up, and sometimes they attach them to the trees, and they sometimes leave them there, because I guess it's kind of a pain to put them up and take them down. And uh, they really don't want to leave their stuff there, and they don't want to have uh, one deer be spooked, uh, or you know, people having tracks all over the place. So it turns out that really was a bad idea. Uh, in the end, I had absolutely nobody, even though probably 10 people, 10 groups, uh, originally came out, looked at the land, thought it was a great idea. Nobody, none, not a single group or person wanted to hunt my land that way. It failed miserably.
so what I, uh, my next uh, idea, hopefully it's a good one, because I got I'm going with it right now, was to invite a bunch of groups out. Uh, I ended up having four groups show up, and uh, basically I told them that uh, you know I told them that there were other groups involved interested, uh, and I told them that you know whatever group made me the best offer in terms of how much time they could have somebody out here is the group that was going to be allowed to hunt the land. Uh, in the end, uh, one group uh, has committed to basically having somebody here almost every morning and every evening for the next three months. It's now almost the end of September. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it's uh, the group that I'm going to go with has uh, four hunters. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, every morning and every evening is uh, feasible. And they seem to know each other, or they know each other, they're all friends. And uh, because of that, well then, uh, you know, essentially, I'm leaving the, all the scheduling up to them. And uh, they seem to like that a lot better. So if you are planning an orchard, and if you plan to use hunters to protect your deer, or protect your trees from deer, yeah, sorry about that, uh, the way it seems that you should get hunters onto your land and maximize the amount of coverage uh, that uh, there's a hunter on your land protecting your trees is to invite a large number or several groups out and tell them that you can only let one group on but the group that's uh, going to be allowed on is the one that can uh, uh, commit to have the most number of, uh, you know, spend the most time on the land.